Yes, uh, thank you very much, dear President. Uh, I want to start where uh, Mr. Hughes ended, and I want to, uh, to uh, put a request to you. Uh, may I ask that uh, you raise in your intervention uh, on, uh, on Thursday uh, in the European Council the issue of Hungary? Because what is happening there for the moment uh, is really an offence against the principles of uh, the uh, Union. And I, and I think really uh, we cannot longer uh, turn around this problem as we do it uh, already now more than uh, 18 months, I should say. And that we have to start Article uh, 7 of the treaty. Article 7 of the treaty is not deciding on sanctions immediately. It starts uh, by an, uh, an analysis of the situation in Hungary and by recommendations given. So my request to you is to raise it uh, in the Council. I should also ask the Irish Presidency to put it on the agenda uh, of uh, the Council and also ask to the Commission uh, to raise the point uh, in the Council, because uh, you are saying, and some of you are saying, yeah, we have to examine it. Well, what to examine it? It's crystal clear. There are a number of breaches of the uh, European values. It has been uh, noted by the European Commission, by the Venice Commission, by the Hungarian Constitutional Court, uh, by, the, uh, European, by a number of European institutions, so the only thing, and what they have done simply in Hungary, is they have put all these breaches against European values now inside the Constitution. And say, well, the problem is solved. It's fully compliant with the Constitution in Hungary, so you can continue uh, these breaches of, uh, of the European values. So my request to you, to Mr. Barroso and to the Irish Presidency, is uh, now uh, to take this serious and, and to have a discussion uh, inside the Council uh, based on Article Seven. My second uh, uh, remark is uh, about the Spring Council itself. Mr. Barroso, you have written a letter to the European Council, and I, I take one sentence of it. Um, second paragraph, I think. It is the first paragraph, the end of the first paragraph. Uh, we are not yet out of the crisis, but we can see that reform efforts of member states are starting to bear fruit. That's what you have written in that letter. And I have to tell you, when I uh, make an assessment of the key data on GDP, unemployment and public debt and deficit, I'm less optimistic about it, about the situation in Europe for the moment. What I see is the following thing. Seven countries are in recession today. So that means less than uh, zero growth. So it's a negative growth. Nine countries are in stagnation. That means uh, less than 1% economic growth. Uh, and in the UK it's, it's the same, it's also, less, it's also economic stagnation. I see unemployment, eight countries with uh, an unemployment figure higher than 10%, two countries, even Spain and Greece, with an unemployment figure of 27% today. And I see public debt and, and, and deficits, well, are all countries in the Eurozone, except two, Estonia and Luxembourg, are breaching the rules of the Stability Pact. And outside the Eurozone, Mr. Kahneman, it's not better because the UK has also nearly 100% of public debt. And it's not only a question of figures, colleagues. What I see is in Greece the rise of the extreme right. In Italy we have no government. In Cyprus we have uh, banks, uh, banks are failing. In Spain we have a lost generation for the moment with an unemployment figure of 50%. In France, in Belgium, in the Netherlands, there, are, there is a need for new packages of savings uh, to, uh, to comply with a number of rules. Finally, in Ireland, uh, we are entering in the sixth year of austerity. So, what I think for the moment, the real assessment is of the European Union is that we don't need, Mr. Hughes, less fiscal discipline because, let's be honest, fiscal discipline, you need it for your growth on the midterm and the long term. No, what we need to recognize is that we need a second track. We don't have a second track for the moment. We don't need to abolish the first track of fiscal discipline. That should be a huge mistake. We need to put a second track uh, the fastest as possible. And the second track is solidarity, is growth, is investment, and is mainly what we know all about. There's a mutualization of debt, a redemption fund, euro bills, uh, and that is the only way to lower the interest rates in a number of countries in the south of Europe. How can, you, how can you, in fact, solve the problems in a country like Spain and Italy who have still 
or 6% of interest rates today. Half of the efforts of these governments are going today to interest payments to the bondholders instead as a help to give a boost in the economy of these uh, countries. So my, 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 my uh, uh, conclusion, uh, Mr. President, is that instead of making now analysis of the forecasts, let's develop that vision. Let's develop the second track. And let's not make the mistake, Mr. Euch, uh, to make a choice between growth and solidarity. It's growth and solidarity. But work on it with the Council and with the Commission.